Hello, welcome back. As I have explained earlier, I'll be having short MCQs and we will discuss one MCQ in a short video of two to three minutes. Uh, please do subscribe and share and uh, do like the videos when it's useful to you because the YouTube algorithm recognizes it that way. So the question for uh, today is whether a diagnosis of respiratory distress syndrome and TTN can coexist. So read the question again. The diagnosis of RDS and TTN cannot coexist in the same baby. Is it true or false? So the question is whether it cannot coexist. I'll pause for a few seconds. Think of your answer. So uh, coming back to the answer, I mean the answer is obviously false because they can coexist. And remember that the pathophysiology of the respiratory distress is not confined to one single mechanism. It can be a combination of factors that play a role in each baby. And the reason for asking this question is to drive home the point that you really need to figure out what's happening in a particular baby, understand what are the factors contributing. So for example, a late preterm baby or a term baby with a gestational diabetes born by cesarean can have a transient tachypnea pathophysiology as well as surfactant deficiency contributing. And if you don't manage the transient tachypnea efficiently, the uh, RDS pattern may start uh, playing a bigger role because the lung starts closing down in volume and the surfactant deficiency will be more obvious. When the lung is kept open, the surfactant spreading uh, happens more effectively, the reuptake happens more effectively, and so the worsening is not as marked. So uh, it can also be that uh, meconium aspiration overlaps with infection or there is secondary surfactant deficiency from meconium aspiration, pulmonary hemorrhage, congenital pneumonia and so on. So these are also examples where one pathology coexists or there is an additional pathology overlapping. And obviously in any ventilated baby, ventilator associated pneumonia, secondary acquired infection is a possibility as well. So remember that uh, it need not be one particular diagnosis. Of course, for documentation and insurance purposes, you may uh, decide on the main or a primary diagnosis and the contributing factors. So if it's a preterm baby with respiratory distress, uh, you would be favoring more diagnosis of RTS. Uh, if it's in front of diabetic mother with a more severe respiratory distress, you would be favoring RDS. But uh, TTN pathophysiology can overlap and contribute to the respiratory distress in these babies. I hope this helps. Thank you.